So I didn't get a chance to review the original OnePlus Nord Buds when they launched last year, but I've seen a lot of folks using it. So I'm going to rectify that miss by reviewing the new OnePlus Nord Buds 2. Now these are priced 200 rupees more than the launch price of the OG Nord Buds and they're priced at about 2999, for which you get extra active noise cancellation and transparency modes as well. Also it's packed with useful features for a budget pair of truly wireless earbuds. However, whether they're good or not will depend on the sound quality because 80% of my buying decision rests on sound quality. If you don't know me yet, I'm Asha. You're watching Track and Take English. Let's do a detailed review of the OnePlus Nord Buds 2. Let's talk about the design of the case. It looks like a pill box where you keep your tablets in them. It's made entirely of plastic and don't expect it to be really sturdy plastic or anything because it's a budget pair of truly wireless earbuds, but still they feel sturdy enough for the use case. Just handle them carefully. Now the color variant that we got is the lightning white variant, which has this two-tone finish, which kind of looks nice. So you've got a gray lid on top and a white base. Also, when I took it out of the box and saw these buds for the first time, the case and the buds themselves, there were specks of dust on it. And that I thought were like something that I had to clean it away. And I was like, why is it dirty out of the box? But that's actually a design pattern. This is OnePlus's idea of making it look slightly unique and different from the rest of the 2D wireless earbuds that are there in the market. But I don't know if I like it that much. Now in the rear of the case, you get the type C port and the pairing button as well. Talking about pairing, these buds support Bluetooth 5.3 protocol. Now, if you're wondering about fast pairing, then there is only OnePlus fast pair option, but you did not get Google's fast pair option. So other Android phone users cannot get instant pairing. Now, when you open the case, you will find the buds inside a cavity and they're held together by magnets. Let's see how strong they are on camera, live, right now. Okay, this is a lot of effort. Okay, the right one fell off. But it did take a lot of effort for me to yank it out, so don't expect it to fall out very easily. I love doing these audio reviews, so I would love your support as well, so don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever we put out an awesome new audio review. Now, talking about the design of these buds, they're very unique. You get a flat, broad stem, which was first introduced in its predecessor. And I found the fit particularly good. And once you find the right tips for your ear, the seal, even the passive noise cancellation is very, very good. Now with these buds in my ear, I could listen to them for three, four hours at a stretch without any fatigue. I don't think you should have a problem with fit either. In fact, the buds also get IP55 rating, which means there's water resistant and definitely sweat resistant. So if you use them while you're exercising, they shouldn't go bad. Now the flat side on the stem also houses the touch controls. And since they are flat, it's very easy to register the touch and to know for sure, you get that sure feeling that, you know, you've actually registered the command. So a single tap plays or pauses the music, double tap changes the song, long press changes the ANC or transparency mode depending on what you've set it to, and a longer press switches to the other device that is connected. So these buds, remember the previously connected device and I tried it with an Android phone and my MacBook, it worked seamlessly, no problem. Of course, this is not dual connection like you get on Realme's earbuds, but this is still a good compromise. What is explicitly missing is automatic wear detection, so you do not get automatic play or pause when you take it out of your ears or put it back in again. So this is not something that you expect on many buds budget earbuds in this price category, so it's all right. Now, the first time you connect these buds, if you use a OnePlus phone, then the buds controls are all there within the Bluetooth settings page itself. On other Android phones, you will have to use the Hey Melody app. Now, through this app, the first thing that you will see is that you can get a clear indicator of the charge on the buds and the case themselves. And below that, you have the active noise cancellation transparency and active noise cancellation off modes. And below that are the equalizer settings, which I will come to when I talk about the sound quality. And after that, you also get a low latency mode or a game mode. By default, the latency is really low at 94 milliseconds. And with OnePlus phones, when you switch on the game mode, the latency drops to 47 milliseconds. And that is actually very, very good. In fact, I tested the latency on these buds and there is very little lag between audio and when you're shooting the gun in Color Duty. And finally, you can also tweak the earbuds controls from the app itself. All right, let's talk about the sound quality. Inside, you get 12.4 millimeter drivers. It's at each housing and you get the support for Bluetooth AAC codec, there is no high risk codec support out here, which is all right because these are budget, so not really a problem. So now if I have to describe the sound, it's a very U-shaped sound signature with a lot of emphasis on the low end, which is the bass and the treble. Now this kind of sound tuning is something that most people like it. I call it a massy sound tuning and it's perfect for genres of music like rock, hip hop, ADM, and of course Bollywood as well. The problem with such a sound signature is that the low end is kind of bloated and therefore it tends to mask the mids. So in Devaral and Atam from Pony in Selvan, there's a bass drum hit that comes in and that sort of masks the vocals slightly. Now it's not too bad. I've definitely heard worse, but there is some auditory masking happening. But the kind of 
shimmer that the treble has and the kind of reach that it has in the song Soul from the same album, It Put a Smile on My Face. Now, I know some might find it a little too bright, but trust me, I mean, it's kind of refined sounding for a pair of budget truly wireless earbuds, which is what took me by surprise. The other thing that I really like is how clean it sounds. There are so many truly wireless earbuds in this 3000 rupee price category that sound really muddy, but this one has decent sound staging and decent imaging as well. The instrument separation is fairly good, especially in tough tracks like Do I Want to Know by Arctic Monkeys. You know, the more I listened to the Nord Buds 2, it reminded me of the Oppo Enco Air 2 Pro. It's a slightly bassier version of that sound signature, and that's not necessarily a bad thing because I have been recommending the Enco Air 2 Pro to a lot of folks who want good sound quality. And one thing that a lot of folks will genuinely appreciate about OnePlus is that it definitely gets much louder. But don't listen to music on these buds at very high volumes because your ears will definitely go bad. Listen always whenever you're using a pair of earphones or headphones, listen to music at 70% volume. That's always a good level to keep. Now, if you feel certain aspects like the bass or the treble is a little too much for you, you can tweak that from the settings as well, the EQ settings that is available. The custom equalizer is not too detailed, but at least you have the option to tweak it and bring the bass down and bring the treble down slightly. I use this equalizer setting and I got the best kind of sound. Honestly, I'm really glad that OnePlus and Oppo are concentrating on providing good sound quality across price ranges, whether it's expensive earbuds or budget earbuds. Now talking about ANC, despite the fact that it only cuts out 25 dB of environmental sound, it's not too bad. And that's also because I got really good passive noise cancellation, like I mentioned before. So along with that, when you tack on ANC, the quality of you know noise cancellation that happens is pretty decent. However, transparency mode sounds kind of average when it tries to amplify the sound from the environment. It kind of sounds robotic, something that I'm not a fan of. There are also two mics and OnePlus says that you know the mic quality has been improved and it sounds really good. But trust me, mic quality on budget truly wireless earbuds are not that great. I didn't expect this to be good either. It's all right. Take a listen for yourself. Let me know what you think. This is an audio recording to the notes of the OnePlus Nord Buds 2. Why do you guys think of the sound quality? You know what, if you're somebody who takes a lot of calls, trust me, a pair of wired earphones with, uh, you know, a dedicated mic will be much better. Now coming to battery life, the battery life has also improved. With ANC off, you get seven hours from the buds, but you get 36 hours from the case. And with ANC on, you get five hours from the buds and 27 hours from the case. And that's good enough for most use cases. You know what, honestly, when I first went into for reviewing these, I didn't expect them to be so good. And considering the price category that it's operating in, it's something that I'm gonna be recommending to a lot of folks for decent sound quality and decent ANC performance as well. But is the Enco Air 2 Pro better sounding? Yes, slightly, but you also have to pay more for it. This one doesn't cost as much. So what do you guys think of the OnePlus Nord Buds 2? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.